It was a day for diplomacy on the Ukraine crisis, from Washington to Moscow and beyond. All this is more than 100,000 Russian troops mass along the border with Ukraine. Foreign Affairs correspondent Nick Schifrin has followed the events of this busy day. I'm delighted to have the chancellor here today. Across nearly 5,000 miles from the White House to the Kremlin, a day of diplomacy. French President Emmanuel Macron met with Russian President Vladimir Putin and expressed hope that war could be averted. Putin called the talks useful. Some of his ideas and proposals, about which I think are too early to speak, but I think these ideas could form a basis for our further joint steps. And new German Chancellor Olaf Scholz met with President Biden. They tried to present a united front. He has the complete trust of the United States. Germany is our, one of our most important allies in the world. There is no doubt about Germany's partnership with the United States, none. It is important that we act together, that we stand together, and that we do what is necessary together. But the unity rhetoric doesn't match the whole reality. Germany prevents fellow NATO members from sending German ammunition to Ukraine. And Germany refuses to publicly threaten the German-Russian pipeline Nord Stream 2 if Russia invades Ukraine. Germany has indefinitely paused the certification process. The White House wants to use that pause as leverage over Russia. Today, Biden was clear and Scholz switched to English to try and back him up. The notion that Nord Stream 2 would go, Nord Stream 2 would go forward with an invasion by the Russians is just not going to happen. We will be united. We will act together and we will take all the necessary steps and all the necessary steps will be done by all of us together. The U.S. and much of NATO are trying to take military steps to reinforce the alliance. Today, American soldiers usually based in the U.S. landed in Poland to bolster a thousand NATO troops already deployed there. European countries are also reinforcing NATO's eastern flank with European jets and European soldiers, all an attempt to deter any war in Ukraine from expanding into NATO. But the Russians continue to expand their military footprint on NATO and Ukraine's borders. The Ministry of Defense releases video nearly every day of troops practicing the tactics they could use if they invaded Ukraine. U.S. officials tell PBS NewsHour Russia now has nearly three-quarters of what they would need for a full invasion. And U.S. officials say if Russian soldiers did invade, they could inflict catastrophic casualties, including 50,000 civilians, and cause millions to flee. The U.S. also fears that Russian soldiers could capture Kyiv and overthrow the government in a matter of days. He's in a position now to be able to invade, almost uh, assuming that uh, um, the uh, the ground is frozen above Kyiv. Uh, he has the capacity to do that. And Biden also that. urged Americans to leave Kyiv. I think it'd be wise to leave the country. Uh, not, I don't mean our, I don't mean, I'm not talking about our diplomatic corps. I'm talking about Americans who are there. I hate to see them get caught in a crossfire. But nothing is containing Russia's military buildup, even as diplomacy continues. President Macron heads to Kyiv tomorrow. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin.